Alrighty, everybody. You can hear me, right? I have a red light on my thing. You're muted. I can't hear a thing you're saying. Still can't hear a thing you're saying. You were working and then weren't working. What did you do when you started the stream? Oh, uh, there we go. Now it's working. Yeah. Okay. What'd you do? I don't know. It just wasn't working. I just messed, like, reset the settings and all that, and then it worked. Um... Okay. Hi, everybody. Yes, we have video on again. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't have it on yet. Uh, well, I thought you just fix your camera. I do, but I haven't turned it on yet. Uh, yeah, look at yeah. me. I look, I look all boring. There we go. Boring and professional. <laughs> Not that professional. I mean, I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm in a business yeah, casual shirt. Your, 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 hair's, business your hair's all the mess. Hey, because it's short. I literally can't make it go, go flat when it's doing that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, better? A bit better, yeah. Okay, let me get... Okay. Or my preferred I can be full Amazon. There you go. I'm just happened to have an Amazon patty. <laughs> because of course Fair. I do. Fair. If I chewed up banana. So, anyway, I named the channel Why You Can't Eat the Pie. Because it's pie day. I can't eat pie. That is unfortunate. We don't so, have pie though, so it doesn't really matter much. Yes. Yes. So, did, did we talk about Easter and Lent a couple of episodes ago? Oh, uh, we, we did. did. We, we, we did um, a bit about Easter and Lent with, with because, that. Because, because Pancake Day was also on Tuesday. So we talked about it. Uh, yeah, we did. But the the general tradition is that you give up... So, traditionally, you, you give up Lent. Uh, oh, you give up um, leaven. So, yeast and yeast products. Um... What I did this year was no sugary desserts at all, so I can't eat pie, <laughs> um, which is unfortunate because it is pie day. Uh, which again, why it's called pie day is you just look at your calendar, and it's only pie day in the U.S. or by U.S. Yes. calendar standards yeah, because, because it's three one four, which is. March 14th, which is 314. Is there? There's no... I mean, you can't have a pie day in Europe. Because there's no... Uh, no, you can't. There's no 14th month that you could run on that would make it a pie day. So. In 1592, I, um, I don't think they cared enough about having a true pie day. Wait, what do you mean 1592? 0.141592. Okay, so you say, so you're saying on um, in 1992, Pi Day would be the more accurate version of Pi Day. In 1592, 1592. 0.141592.65. Was the concept of Pi was probably around in the 15th century or 16th century? Is it 15 or 16? So yeah, it's I think no, it's 14, it isn't it? I, ha I hate centuries. I hate this thing of centuries. Because it's a pain. Yes, the second century is is the 100s. Yeah. So it's technically so the 1500s. So 1500s is 16th century. No. 16th. Oh, it's, 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 it's the 16th century. Because we're, we're in the 21st century right now. Okay. I'm not in the 19th century. Okay. Yeah, you're right. 19th century is, the, is 18. What is the best pie time you've got, Mal? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, pie is infinitely long. Because... But memorizing yep. pie... I don't I'm know. I can see why people do it. But but Malcolm, not... I'm starting I'm starting to believe you less and less on how, lo how long this typing is going. I feel like you're looking it up. 
Yeah. Um, because did we have when? Did oh the, yeah. When did we have the origins of the AM PM timer? I guess no. We always still had that because would, would they still call it AM PM at that point? Uh, what is AM PM anyway? Uh, like post morning. I don't actually. I actually don't know what the definition. Um, it's. I doubt it's something that obvious. It's going to be like. Um, what's the word? Uh, okay. It's going to be something Latin. Post. Post. Meridian. Uh, okay. With Meridian. I know the. I, the word. I know it, but I can't remember what it. It's like. So it's, it's like horizon. It's isn't it? it's midday, and yeah. and ante. Ante Meridian. It's M E R I D I E N. Meridian. Ante or Ante Meridian. I mean, you could keep going with that, Mal, and it'd be March 14th, 1592 at 6.53 and so many seconds. And then if you want to get into like sub seconds and mm -hmm. all those things, you could keep it going. Now, the reason why I know 6.14159264 is because of night in of night in the museum with the line signs. Um, that's I, what it could be the moment. I don't remember it. that. That was, that was oh. how far they asked it. I don't remember that part of night in the museum. Night, uh, night, night in the museum two, little Einstein's three point one four one five nine two six five four. Is that rounded? Yes, because it's nine two six five three five. Okay. And so, Man, and so the what was round. what was that time? There was some type of legislation where they tried to push through that pi was four. I remember that. Um, no. What was that thing? If it was, it was a joke. I think it was or a joke. They tried to do it. Should yeah. not be in Congress. Yeah. Yeah. That. So, that, that was, it was a. It was a, jo it was a joke, Bill. It's like the um, uh, Shanghai Fugu Agreement. If you remember that. <laughs> yes. I don't remember if it was actually in the bill or not. Though I thought it was just made up. No, it was, it was a thing. That's right. That's right. There was a, there was a thing that was signed into law. It was like, and they added in a thing of, and they will also be party to the Shanghai Fugu Agreement. Doesn't exist. No, it does not. It was just a thing they just put in that after many back and forth, with no side would agree to anything. They kind of just put it in as a joke, as part of their frustration, mm -hmm. and. The other side just didn't acknowledge it and just kind of like, okay, we agree to it. They didn't even know what it was. They just agreed to it, um, mm -hmm. which doesn't really do anything. I mean, it was, I think the bill was supposed to be a thing about permits for, um, it was a bill about permits for fugu preparing uh, and uh, what's, the, what's the word for having someone come to your country? It's not immigration, but you need like a certain thing for it. Um, I my brain is turned off because it's oh. like years ago. I remember I remember looking at like uh, visas or something. Yeah, visas. That, that visas, green cards. You know, it was a thing for visas okay. for uh, certified f uh, fugu chefs, with fugu chef being pufferfish chefs. Mm. That was what the agreement was in there supposed to be. They just put it in there as a joke. I don't know why, of all things, you make as a joke the fugu fish visa it sounds realistic enough so i don't know of all the things you could joke about why that one yeah fugu just looks like another fish but it's like one of the most toxic yeah. fish I, I know we've talked about fugu on uh, tangent tuesday before but yeah it's uh it's got a neurotoxin into it which in particular i believe neurotoxin it basically degrades it prevents your body from like i don't know exactly the goes way after the nervous system yeah so well oh, so it's a tetrodotoxin, and I think it goes after like your spinal column. So the idea would be like you get poisoned, you get paralyzed, um, and you can't do anything. You just kind of suffocate because it also paralyzes your lungs. Um, 
can't, you can't move. move. You just die of the poison. It's very, very. It's a very unpleasant kind of poison. Um, so yeah, not one you want to mess with. Um, Fugu is basically blowfish. It's just a really nasty blowfish. I mean, but people eat blowfish for some reason. I don't think it's a good idea. But um, um, there was an interview I watched from professional, from certified Fugu chef, who kind of just said that it's like mm-hmm. he doesn't really know why people eat it. It doesn't taste special at all. But they pay me for it. Yep. It's like, like I, I'll prepare. I know how to make it. I think it was some guy who tried to. It was a video I was watching with some guy who tried to make um, every meat sandwich. He tried to make an every meat sandwich. So a bit of like every possible meat you could get. So one of them was fugu. And he talked to this chef about it. And like, okay. it's like the fish is kind of bland. It's, it's not that. It's not that tasty. I don't know why people. I don't know why you would risk your life to eat fugu. Because from what it sounds like, it's not like, wow, this is an amazing taste that you'll never experience anywhere else. It's like, it's just kind of like dull fish tasting, from what I've heard. So, is it just like the danger that there's pot- that it could potentially kill you makes you want to try it? Is that, danger is fish. That, is yeah. that it? It's like, oh, it might kill me. And I... So I'm gonna try it, and then that excitement—I don't know—makes like taste better or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, it's the uh, the uh, adrenaline junkie stuff. I mean, you can say anything about like why do you jump off a bridge with a bungee cord attached to you, and things like that. Yeah, but this one Even seems though, far. Like, this I'm one to, seems I am far to try less. It one time. This seems far less like. Um, exciting or fun. Exactly. You get a mediocre fish yeah. meal. And the risk reward ratio mm-hmm. is that you die from paralytic poisoning. That just doesn't seem I very fun to me. At least if you like yeah. you jumping off the bridge, you get to experience that free falling sensation, and that's something that's unique. You can't really experience it in other places. You you get to experience that free fall and the I thought this was this was supposed to be attached moment. Um. <laughs> okay, hopefully not the second one, but yes, but yeah, it's like I don't see what the uh, the danger you could say or like what the enjoyment is in trying to eat fugu it just doesn't seem really worth it mm-hmm. for other things that seem right. yeah I can I can see that for other things which I, I got yeah but there's like kind of a practical preface to skydiving it's called like I mean, militarily yeah yeah, and there's also the get out of a plane with a parachute situation, but but I don't know. Like we're talking about like impractical things. The second I one was when a parachute bored. is useful is, a, is unlikely. Yeah, but like unpractical things. I was bored a couple of days ago, and I just saw um, a video that was talking about um, one of like those. I think I might mention it in the tendency in the past in the past in passing of like. Um, one of the, like, the many weird floods that people have caused by improper manufacturing. I just looked up to see what other ones I could find because it's weird what people have tried to make and then had stuff go wrong. Blood. Yes. So you most of the one that most people know about is the Great Molasses Flood. Right? Yep. Most yep. people know about the Great Molasses Flood in, in Boston. If you don't know about it... Yeah, we talked about that one before. Yeah. 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 But there was also... So like the, for people who haven't known, the Great Molasses Flood was just they produced a giant molasses tank. Which why do they have all that molasses? Do you think? Because it was a party. Po- was... No. What, what, what do you need that much molasses for? Uh, like 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 a political stunt party. Oh no! I no, it's not for that. Um. Okay. As related to most of the stories of weird floods that I've learned, has to do with the fact that it can be used to make ethanol. It was used in the oh. process of making ethanol. Okay. So that's why they just had a massive amount of molasses around, which um, proceeded to... Uh, I believe what ended up happening is it was very cold for a p- period of days. So this, this, this wasn't food-grade molasses, though? No, this was used in, this was used in manufacturing for uh, ethanol being alcohol. Uh, yeah. But basically what ended up happening was the weather. Well, it was in like the winter or whatever in New York. Is Boston in New York? Boston's in New York, right? My geography isn't that bad. No. It's not it's in New not. York? 
Uh, Massachusetts. No, My geography Massachusetts. is that bad. Good to know. Um, nice. But yeah, they had it. It was... Uh, the thing is, like, why they had such a big tank. Because I looked it up because I was curious. Why would you need such a big tank? It contained, like... Um, what were the numbers? I had them here. I thought I wrote them down, but I didn't. So, I mean, I had them on a Google, on a Wikipedia page. Eh, eh, mm-hmm. eh. I have too many tabs open of uh, school notes. Did I accidentally close it down? That would be mm-hmm. depressing. Ah, no, I found it. Yeah. Never mind. I found it. Um, it contained... It was... Uh, 12,000 metric tons of molasses. Which um, is a... Uh, yeah, the volume? Uh, do you mean like in like liters and that type of stuff? Is that, is that, is that mm. the volume? Is that the measurement of volume? Or, or cubic meters or something. Well, yes, no, meters, it, 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 so it contained... The tank contained 2.3 million gallons. 8,700 cubic meters. That's enough. To, yeah, that's not. That's not uh, that is enough to drown it. Uh, yeah, uh, that that did happen, which that's sad. I'm gonna say that, but I'm not gonna go too in detail on that part because it's sad, and yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it was the um, the cleanup process. Like, just imagine. Oh. You've got all of this molasses sitting there. Also, the temp. The reason I go talk about temperature is the reason why I think the tank went wrong was because it was a period of many cold days in the winter. Then you had one warmer day. I think it got up to about 40 degrees Celsius. So, 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, so cold, 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 hot! It was, I yeah, mean, okay. 40 degrees Celsius... Uh, sorry, no, it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius. I got that. It was 7 degrees Celsius. Yeah, just... but Just above freezing. Just enough for like a state transition, and if the molasses doesn't warm evenly... As it expands from the heat difference. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a lot of problems with Bursting it, which pipe. in particular that it flooded out, did a lot of damage to buildings, and it did kill a few people, yeah. But um it also yep. was a pain to clean because it solidified in the cold. Stick sticky molasses, yeah. Yeah, um so their their basic process of cleaning it was to just pump hundreds of gallons of water, like millions of gallons of water. To just try and clean it up off the streets. Um, I believe they turned the harbour grey or brown with how with how much of the uh, molasses ended up going into the ocean. But the fish get some molasses now, yay! What that you would think it's like that's a rare event that's happened. No, this is not the first time this has happened. I've found like three or four reported cases of very similar things happening. Um, I mean, you had the Great London Beer Flood of yeah, 1814. Yeah, we don't know how... Okay, so it, it wasn't all molasses then. No, it was we, no. We, but, uh, we clearly did not know how to store large things on liquid. Well, this was this was a publicity stunt. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a the thing in 1800s. Um, England breweries for some reason that it was a publicity stunt to just make really really big tanks that was just a thing they did as like a publicity stunt so one of them what was the name of it um uh basically the size of the tank was uh how much was it uh it it could for a visual representation of it you could fit two you could have a 200 person dinner in this, in this barrel. You had a table of 200 people in it. All around the table. You could have a 200 person sit down dinner in this barrel. Mm-hmm. Which I believe nice. it wasn't as... I don't think it was as much. Um... Oh, no, that size. Yeah, that probably has not got the manufacturing parts as the whole water. I mean, it, it kind of did. For a while, uh, I believe it was about three hundred twenty gallons of bit be- of uh, beer that was in that tank. That's it. Yeah, I mean that's it's. It, isn't that... I mean that's that's what I that's what I mean three hundred twenty sorry three hundred twenty thousand 
gallons. That's what I meant to say. Okay. Well, 30, I, 20 I, gallons, like, that's only a... No, I saw... Mm. I missed okay. the abbreviation I put on my notes. That was 320 in, like, thousands. So, yeah, it was 320,000. So, that not as much... longer. Whatever. You, you took the effort to write thousands with the other than just thing was zeros. Whatever, well, K. K would have worked. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, whatever. But um, so it's smaller than the Great Molasses Flood. But um, again, that 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 also killed some people, which wasn't great. It also destroyed a lot of buildings, which I don't think is what you expect in a city for a building to just get destroyed because a fifteen foot tidal wave of beer comes in and wrecks your house. Yeah, I'm now just thinking of that joke. If you've heard of it, the um, the. Th- Three men go down a, a magical slip and slide, and no, I have not. The magic is that when you when you go down the slide, you will land in in whatever you in whatever you call out as you go down. Yeah, no. So I know. the okay. first man goes down okay. and goes, "Beer," <laughs> yeah. and the the second man goes down, "Brandy," okay. and the third man goes down and 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 forgets what's going on and goes, "We." <laughs> yeah. Uh, so te- um, thank you. Joke. Thank you for telling me the terrible joke. Um, yep. But you would think. I mean, let's just say it. It, it cost about um, the company who did it. I can't remember what the name of the company was off the top of my head. Um, it cost them. It cost 125 million pounds of damage in today's money. Oof. Yeah, about 23... 23 uh, so that one doesn't include the cost of the beer they lost. No. It just cost the amount of money they had to pay to repair stuff. Ah. Like all the buildings that broke. Yeah, I don't think people liked it when they're... I know some people probably did, and they all hated it when they're... Well, they're I will say, of the nine deaths, one of them was to alcohol poisoning. And someone was just like, yeah, it filled my bathtub with beer. I wasn't complaining. Yeah, so, yeah, that that, 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 that did end up happening. Um, although apparently they got a 7,000, okay. they got a um, 7,250 uh, government grant to uh, help on the, to recover from the damages that they caused. Which in today's money is about 400,000. $400,000. 400,000 pounds, sorry. They said it owed one... I thought it was it was a hundred million. That they no, paid. no, not a hundred million. One point two five million. Okay, so the government paid about a third of it. Yes. Okay. Uh in in tax rebates. Um. Ah, uh, yeah, that is yeah. how the government does that. Yeah, the thing. Um, so, so the way that works. Yeah, so the way that works is something terrible has happened, and the government wants to help pay for it. For whatever reason, so the tax, so 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 the government says, I will give you a million dollars in tax rebates to help pay for it. it means they're not giving you any money. It just means that 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 you don't pay taxes until you've not paid a million dollars worth of taxes. That's yeah. what that means. With basically, so the if same at thing. the end of the year I would pay, yeah. But if if at the end of the year I'd pay half a million in taxes because of all the business that I've done. I don't. I just don't. I just don't pay taxes, and now the government only uh, only owes me half a million dollars because I've used the other half already. And 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 then when that runs out, I go back to paying taxes as normal. Yeah. Um, this also, by the way, is why a lot of these big businesses. Um, you can see people in the media going about how they how they uh, you know and, and complain about how they don't pay taxes. Sometimes that's true, but it's not because they're being devious. It's because, for example, the state of North Carolina might say, I will give you a million dollar tax break on state taxes if you open your uh, uh, your distribution center here um, to use like Amazon or Lowe's or really any, um, any major retailing market thing. If you open your distribution center, which is going to be creating a thousand jobs of people that you know do the shipping the packing and all, and all the maintenance for that for that center if you open it in this state we'll give you a million dollar tax rebate 
just so that you create the jobs in our state and not in Florida. Um, yeah, there's actually a lot of movie. Um, a lot of a lot of movies um, get a lot of tax rebates by ha- by saying, "Hey, if you record them on movie in your in my state, I'll give you a tax deductible for it." I think it's South North Carolina yeah. does that a lot. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, yeah, I can't remember it was one, I can't remember one of now. the states in this area. Yeah, it was. What, what, the, there are like two or three main states in the U.S. that are like this is where all all the movies are made. Because early on they did this whole you get basically no uh, 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 no taxes on on all of the um, money you spend on the movie here, and then all the businesses opened up that support movie making. There are professional ca- uh, 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 um, film studios and camera parts and prop, prop makers, makers and yeah. all that are now in these places, and so. There's just no nowhere else to go to make them, you know, you know, to actually have professional help when you want to make a movie. And so now the state can tax that at, at regular rates and earn the money. That's that's the benefit for it. So it's kind of it's kind of like a bribe, in that the state bribes the business to come and is, is that, work here. Does that count as a bribe? Um, that's more just like um... not legally. No, it's not legally a bribe. Um, well, it depends on your definition of bribe. But that's is. yeah. But so that's 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 the general idea of why you can see companies that don't pay tax nearly as high as they might normally do otherwise. Um, that's one of the, the ways they get around it, and it's it's not so much a bad thing as to say, yeah, we made this deal with the state where, where if we have at least a thousand people employed in this office, we do not pay tax on the office. Yeah. And that benefits both the business and the state because the state has a thousand people with jobs now that then pay income tax. So that's so that's that's good for the state and good for the business, which, uh, which gets to save money and, re- and reinvest also that. Also, generally good for other, other businesses in the area because, like, oh, now the supermarkets will now have people buying stuff at their shops. All their every restaurant will have people buying food from their place and all that. Yeah, if you if you if you open a big office in the in the middle of a town. That's actually good for the town because now they want to go out to eat dinner because they haven't got time to make it themselves. Yeah. So, like, you get a bunch of, of, of restaurants that now have a customer base. Yeah, it's it's why it's why a lot of those companies try and put those incentives in place to encourage business in their area. Because you're, the main reason those you need those incentives in business is because other areas have already have benefits to them, especially... Um, like especially now, it's why some of the more like some states like North, I think it's North Carolina, South Carolina do it. It's because they're already like states of recording happens all the time. Like California is a place where there's all yep. the infrastructure for it. So to encourage people to not yeah. record in, in California and record in their state instead, where we don't have the infrastructure already, you're going to offer them a bunch of cost reductions because mm-hmm. technically it will probably cost them more to relocate everyone and all the work and all that into your particular state. So you're trying to incentivize it. Yeah. Like, hey, we'll give you a bunch of cost deductions so you'll actually do it. Here. Yeah, it's 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 part. It's it basically comes down to like um, being the first one anywhere is more expensive than being the second one there. And so to incentivize you to, to be the first one there, make that first step, the government will help you do it. Yeah. And that means that you get the first person there, and then the second person comes there, and once. And once a few businesses have come over, there's now enough of a ecosystem of businesses to bring bring the the, the others over without extra attack. Yeah, like that's what that's what happened around here with um with where we live. Um, used to be like something like a ghost town. It just 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 wasn't much here. Then an Ingalls opens, then a Walmart opens, then like a Chick Fil A and a KFC open. And it was not in that order. Dunkin I don't, Donuts. I don't, I don't and now think we Chick- have everything. I don't remember Chick Fil A being a business when we first. I don't. Th- I think Chick Fil A is more of a, like no, a, but a newer business. I I I mean in in terms of like these ones that there, there are less of them that start showing up. Like yeah. like it was a big deal to us when when a Dunkin Donuts opened over uh, uh, opened here because it used to take three hours to get to, to go to one. Oh, it was um, in Bali, so it was four. But hours. now everything's here. Yeah. And now, everything's here. Like, yes, we have that. Why? Because the first five came, and then all the people came, and now there's a business here. So yeah, I'll open a store there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that it's that you can rely partly on like 
it's have ha, ha, have we ha, have we achieved two subways on the same road yet? I don't know. Uh, you, you you do know why there are two subways on the same road in a lot of places. Yes, yes, it's so falling down we've, we've a lot. About this, yeah, yes, it's fallen past a lot, but it's due to um, franchising costs and the way the subway handled their business structure was that they made most of their money from the license agreement of the number of subways out there instead of how much money each subway individually made. So they didn't care if they were being inefficient with their subways as long as they had more stores. It's why there were three times as many subway stores as there were um, McDonald's, for example. Yeah, it's because being a subway store owner has the highest potential profit of any no, actually fast didn't, food chain. It didn't, have the highest, it didn't have the highest potential profit. It's the highest... Potential profit on paper. On paper, it's the highest potential profit to the owner. But yeah. also, it's it's also the highest risk. It wasn't even that high risk. I mean, it kind of was high risk. They, just, I don't know. The, the business model was just interesting. It was one of the examples of you. The you process. get to keep. Yeah, you get to keep a much larger percentage of 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 your sales for yourself, but you've got to pay a higher upfront flat cost. So if you do really well, you will make a lot of money because because Subway is not taking as large a percentage cut. But if you do really poorly, Subway still takes their cut, and they and they, and they don't care if it's eighty percent of your revenue. Okay. Because that was the deal you signed. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's a whole other big point on on uh, flat rate versus percentage rate. Yeah. You know, talking about those like publicity stunts and all that that other companies have done. Um, it's interesting when companies have done big publicity stunts. Um, have you seen stuff like the um, like the world's like giant pizzas and all that type of stuff? If you're trying to make like the world's like largest pizza, you mean or... yeah, the one where where one pizza feeds a thousand? Yeah, well, that's actually something that um, all the record holders made for the food later on. If you ever see one of those? If it's supposed to actually hold a like, I think it's a Guinness World Record. Um, although Guinness itself has a bunch mm-hmm. of weird stuff to it, um, the one of the requirements of making the biggest of a certain type of food is that it has to be consumed and eaten by someone. Because they put yeah. that in place to prevent this whole thing of people just making a bunch of food waste. Yeah, a bunch of extra food waste and all yeah. that. So those really big like pizzas or burgers and all that, they usually do get eaten, which. Some of it. Just, Some it of like it. The world's good. largest burger was like, was like the outer inch was cooked, the inner inch, you know, bit was like. No, I remember. Not, I think there was a way they. I remember seeing one for like um, burger that was about, like actual burger itself was that big. I think there was a way. I think they had a particular way of cooking it, that um, that allowed it. They to shove like, rods though to spread the yeah. Yeah, I think. It Otherwise, it's cooked slowly. Very very yeah. slowly. Yeah. So, I also find it amusing that the whole like weird flood situation. That's like I was talking about it before. You would think that the whole like beer flood thing has only happened once. Now it's happened like three times. Happened again in uh, um, where was it? Uh, what was the name of the place? Um, some it's in the island somewhere. It starts with a D. I think it's Ireland at least. Devonshire or something, yeah. Uh, it, it starts with a D. Mm-hmm. I'm now upset that I can't remember it. This is the problem when you study stuff and your geography is not great. Right. Because I'm, I'm mm-hmm. going to remember it in a second. It starts with a D. I think it's Irish City. Uh, let's see. I don't... I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Oh, hi, doggy! Yes. Hi, this Henry. Is Henry, with his with his little stubby feet. He has really little stubby feet. They're really cute. Hmm. And he also is. Yeah, sure. Look. Oh, I was Dublin. Henry. That's the place. Dublin. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had they, they had it again. Well, that one was more caused by um, a, a big city fire. That. Essentially set fire to a brewery. Burned down the beer factory. Which then yeah. leaked beer everywhere. Which was flaming on fire. 
Um, oh yeah, beer fire. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, it's alcohol. It's a fire. It's just, it's just, it's just a wave of fire. Well, that one caused the least. That one caused the most deaths, but the least deaths that weren't that were preventable. Yes, because the city's on fire. Well, only thirteen people died. All of them to alcohol poisoning. The city's on fire. No, all of them died to alcohol poisoning. How? They decided they. Were... How? What? Seriously, how? It was on fire. Mm, they decided that they wanted to drink it. <laughs> okay, so in other words, this happened inside a major city where the average intelligence was beer, was beerified. Maybe, maybe. Because we, 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 we talked about this yesterday, about the uh, Industrial uh, Revolution, the, 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 the coffee revolution, and how it well, tea and coffee um, can be yeah. seen in... Te- yeah, yeah. That, that in, I don't know in how technology of history. Yeah, I don't know how true this uh, fully is. It's kind of hard of a thing to study, but I've heard one proposed thing for why technology has advanced so much in recent decades in comparison to all the time period before that. And one of the proposed theories I've heard is that it was due to the amount what was pr- primarily uh, being drunk by people back the, early on. It was a lot of alcohol, which is by default a depressant. It slows your thinking down, do all that type of stuff. Um, makes it harder to think and plan and invent new things. And if you're drinking that all the time, it's kind of hard to make inventions. Compared to later on when all the trade and stuff happened, especially around England, and they started drinking primarily teas and coffees, those, mm-hmm. are, stim- those are stimulants. They're supposed to, as the, that's your point. If your primary drink went from a depressant to a stimulant, it helps your brain kind of, it artificially makes your brain function faster. You don't have the, anything like slowing down your thinking and all that, which potentially could lead to more people. Yeah. But also, to be fair, most of the best ideas we have are in the shower and lying in bed. Fair, that's... In terms of when you... When you when you have your best, most creative ideas, it's usually when you're, when you're doing something completely like... Like, you're drifting... And you're There's actually a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of recommend if you're, yeah. if you're learning to study something or trying to work out a solution to a problem. Uh, what you should do is I can't remember what the steps the the actual names of the steps are they call it but there's a um a it involves success, that, going to bed or having a shower. There, there's a process of success, which is to immerse, which mm-hmm. is to think about your problem, think about immerse yourself in the subject of like what the of what you're trying to solve is, and then intentionally make sure you take steps back, take steps away for your brain to kind yeah. of just process it in its sub in your subconscious. And then go back to yep. study again. There's always an important point to give your time, uh, like rest time, between doing stuff. This happens. All, this is actually really useful if you're trying to work on a project for a school paper. I did this um, fairly recently, actually, when I had to do my finals for uh, my Photoshop class. Um, I had no idea what my final project was gonna be, and so I just thought of a bunch of different ideas. Wrote like wrote some things down, thoughts of things of like things I like to do and things I like, and I went through the process of like thinking I wanted to do like a multiple seasons thing, like a multi season thing, and then I just went on the natural train of thinking about like what that would entail, like using like ice and snow and then leaves and other things, and then I just uh, thought about that for a couple of hours, and then I just left. I'm like, okay, I don't have an idea yet, so I'm gonna go do some other stuff. And so I did, and then eventually, like a couple hours, like I was, I was in the shower when it happened. I'm like, why, why you could make an an advertisement for like a, a chilling, like cool product or whatever. So I ended up making an advertisement. for Oh, breath mints. that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I made an advertisement for breath mints, yeah. and I got that idea just randomly in the shower. And I ended up, it helped a lot instead of me like trying to bash my head against an idea and not know what to do to just take a step back and think about it. Let your mind, let your mind do it. That's something that gets. Um, I know a lot of professional businesses try and push that idea as well, but oftentimes it's not about like force an idea now, it's to discuss the issue, discuss the points, and then take a step back and come back to it at a later time when you've had time to really that's, think about it and let your subconscious That's work also on it. why, yeah, that's also why working, o- o- working overtime doesn't necessarily help, at least in creative, in creative endeavors. If uh, you're working overtime in the mines and such, like, it doesn't really matter if you are mentally tired or not you're just swinging an axe it, 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 it's, it's not, or a pickaxe it's not as big a difference um it is still a difference like i mean especially in modern mining you're operating heavy machinery you want to be alert for that 
<laughs> you know, there's actually, um, there's actually a whole but... thing um, about like efficiency over time spent on a task, and yeah. you can, and as yeah, there's like a starting point where when you go from like no time for like thirty minutes, your efficiency is quite low because you're getting to the rhythm of it. And after you're working on a project for about thirty minutes or whatever, your efficiency goes up quite a lot. Um, just because you're getting the flow right. of it, you understand it. You're you're fl- you're making progress in it. Yeah. And then at a certain get, point, you know, an, 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 an hour or two. Yeah, at some point you get a couple right. good hours, and then your productivity just drops all the way down. Worse, yeah, worse than I just started this and, and, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, it's why um, if you uh, ever, it's why um the idea of cramming before tests doesn't really work that well because you can make some progress right but you have to consider that in the out if you're trying to cram 12 hours of learning into actual 12 hours you're not going to get 12 hours of learning you're going to be good for the first two or three maybe and then all the uh, hours what's after worse, be inefficient and useless. what's worse yeah and what's worse is you'll hit the peak you'll learn then you'll crash and burn and then you'll take the test. Yes. Yeah. And you're going to work at all. This is why you we need that freshness to take a test. Yeah. This is why. So... If you're gonna, this is why if you're going to study. I mean, I like to personally before I take a test, I like to study for thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Do you like ten twenty? Do you like twenty thirty minutes of studying before you take the test to get you over that initial like starting hump? And then take the test afterwards. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean you just only study thirty minutes. You should study. Consistently over a short period of time, because I mean, like, you, with the success rate of studying, the longer. If but, but if you've got a test at say six p.m., the most I'll do is study for twenty thirty minutes at five. I will not look at it before that. That day specifically, I might I might do a a time for study in the morning as well. But like, if the test is at six, I'm not studying from three to six because that's going to ruin my my test taking. Uh, yes, I mean uh, sometimes it's, the... sometimes if you've never if you've never but... if, if you've made the mistake of never looking at the material before the hand, I mean, then you you've kind of you've kind of screwed up well, a little bit. Then you're not going to pass the test. No. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit late now. You you aren't passing the test. Uh, so, like, do your study the day before week before you know that sort of thing yeah it helps a lot i mean um cramming yeah. anything just doesn't work so uh, now i'm gonna just go if it's a little bit of time we have left i'm gonna pull up a wikipedia article that i was reading through um a couple of days ago because again i've given up sugary snacks but now i want them um so I don't remember how or why I ended up on this. Oh, I do actually. So, I was looking through Boxu Market, which is a Asian, essentially market where you can buy Japanese, Chinese, Taiwanese, Korean foods here in the US. Because I'm planning to to to, to order some some things from them in a couple weeks, and they have this thing called UFC banana sauce, and apparently. This is a Indonesian thing. No, sorry, a Filipino condiment. It's banana sauce. It's basically it's it's like ketchup but made, made with bananas. Okay, how I'm curious how to try is that? that... I might actually write Ke- no, no, you can't say. I think you've made the mistake here. You said it's like ketchup but made of bananas. That does not work. It's a sauce made of bananas. It has no relation to ketchup because that. Imp- that imparts an idea that it's going to taste You use like it in all the same places. You you use it in all the same places that you would use ketchup. And from what I look up, it tastes like ketchup. It's just a bit sweeter and tangy. Does it... Does it have... Because the ingredients does are... It? Does it have vinegar? The... Um... Because... According to this, this sauce was made in the early 1940s to replace tomato-based ketchup. So it, 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 it is a ketchup substitute. I'm really unsure. So how, I'm really up, unsure how bananas could result on a tomato test, but I could buy it. 
Yeah. Oh, on Wikipedia, it's literally called banana ketchup. Um, that, I think that's one of those things where it's probably and it's made quite... from banana, sugar, vinegar, and spices. No, I bet you it's one of the things where it's quite nice, but it's gonna have that connotation. It's like why I mentioned it. I think we mentioned it before. Why companies that produce one thing oftentimes have smaller companies that produce products that aren't necessarily related to it. Like for example, um, a lot of a lot of like the foods. Mines would world. never make it. In other words. Yeah, you don't have like, cre- um, no, it's like you know, you know, Crest, the toothpaste company. Yes. They own some of like the pizza, yes. frozen pizza companies as well. Yes. But they don't call them. Uh, like, they don't call them Crest this, pizzas. This, yeah, this this might not be true, but let's just say Crest and Kraft. Let's say that 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 Crest toothpaste and Kraft mac and cheese are owned by the same company. You do not make Crest mac and cheese, and you don't make Kraft um, toothpaste. Toothpaste, because yeah. both of those sound disgusting. I feel like the banana ketchup Crest thing mac and cheese has the same really connotation bad. where you hear and go, "That sounds terrible," because your initial thought of what bananas taste like does not align up with what ketchup tastes like. But with all the processing and uh, like the spices and stuff you mix in, it would actually probably be quite and you... nice. Yeah. Having mashed up bananas thoroughly in, um, in the form of adding them to my smoothies, yes, it, it, it would work just fine. I, I consider it working just fine. Yeah, but when you just... You, if you only... You take sp- a banana... Yeah. Well, basically, you cut out you cut out the, the tomatoes and you put in a banana and you get your, your acid back through vinegar. Doesn't... Does and ketchup you've already got ha- I thought ketchup already sweeter. used vinegar in it. Doesn't ketchup already use vinegar? Not, probably not as much. Fair. Fair point. Uh, like, all you got to do is just alter the ratio of the amount of vinegar you use, and you get that. But so anyway, the reason I brought this up was because I stumbled across this and then just went, what are banana dishes of the world? Interesting. And went looking through them. Yeah. So a few of these that look quite nice, and of course ones that mum knows about as well. Uh, the English thing is called banoffee pie. Which I really, 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 really want. Um, I don't think it's good to look up you sugary you pies can... when you're not allowed to eat them, Caleb. I know. I know. Let me send you the link to Banoffee Pie so you can show it on screen. Um, it's a banana whipped cream and caramel pie. It looks amazing, and I want some, but I can't have any right now. Uh, but I might try to make one at some point. Um, there's also a banana boat. So, this is a dessert made of a, made of a banana. It's a campfire treat. Ethan, do you have a guess as to both what the ingredients are in a banana boat and how it's made if it's a traditional campfire treat? Uh, sorry, repeat that again. So, a banana boat is a traditional campfire treat. Yeah. So, it's, it, it, it's eaten around a campfire. What are the ingredients Graham and the crackers, method? Crackers, marshmallow, banana. You probably put it in an aluminum foil and put it into the fire, right? Very, very close. Yes, you do wrap I've it seen, in foil. I've, I've seen this. And basically, I've seen stuff. I've yeah, seen people so make stuff like this before. I've never had one, but I've seen you. All make yeah, stuff you like basically this wrap it in foil, shove marshmallows and chocolate in it, and then cover it in caramel. I'll be honest. I'd rather um, not have the, the caramel. Caramel's optional. I would rather not have the caramel. I don't know. What, um, I don't know what the big deal is. Caramel, caramel sauce. Nice. Caramel sauce. It depends. Maybe. Good caramel sauces. Maybe. But I don't. Um, I, do, I feel like too so, overvalue caramel. It's not that great of a flavor. There's there's also obviously the banana split, which I'd love to have. I haven't had that. In, I don't think I've had that in a long time. I mean, it's just banana it's just ice cream. Banana with ice cream in the middle. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it, it's a banana, cut it down the middle, put ice cream between it, and then cover it in stuff. Um, so, bananas foster. Now, we are we are in America, so I would imagine that people watching this would know what this is. I, I don't know. I don't know what um, this is. It's a dessert made from... It's a, so, 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 just read it on Wikipedia. It's a dessert made from bananas and vanilla ice cream with a sauce made from butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, dark rum, and banana liquor. Um, the butter What's sugar banana liqueur is that alcohol? and then yeah, 
Um, the butter, sh so the butter, sugar, and bananas are cooked. So it basically like crystallizes the sugar and, and butter onto the banana. And then the alcohol is added and set on fire. Okay. And then you add ice cream. <laughs> um, so, yum, I think. So wait, are you toasting the, the bananas? The other one on here, though... Yes, they the, the bananas cooked beforehand um, and then set on fire. Wait, so you... Uh, the thing that... So this... I am shocked that I didn't know that... that that this was a thing. It's also an, an American thing. And when I told mother about it, she's like, "Yeah, I, I've seen, I've seen those plenty of times." What do you, what do you think that is? It's a chocolate. Uh, understanding our it's, topic. It's a banana dipped in chocolate with nuts. It was ice cream. It's a banana. It's being dunked in chocolate and nuts, and then shoved in the freezer. It's a frozen banana. Okay, yeah, no, I'm like that's. Like that just looks like a nice. It's cream. basically just yeah, it, it it it's 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 just ice cream, yeah, because you could make ice cream from bananas. It's just mash up banana, put it in the freezer, and you have ice cream, kind of. Like my my no sugary sweets thing for Lent, I've basically been eating, been eating ice cream for lunch because what I do is I blend up bananas, uh, bl uh Maybe either you should bananas or it as artificial sugars because fruit does have sugar in it. Yeah, but. Well, no, sh no sugary sweets is what uh, is what I had done. So I'm I'm not not doing stuff that's desserty, but it's still I blend up frozen bananas, frozen mangoes, and frozen peaches. And if you don't add too much milk to that to make it blend, so so you do have to add milk to that. But when you do that and you blend it up, it's ice cream. It's soft serve ice cream. It's basically what it ends up going like. So that's what, that's what I've been having for lunch quite a bit. Um, so maybe I'm cheating, but it's fruit. So... I mean, it's a healthy option. It's cheating. Um, so these are weird, though. So so other things on here. So banana bread, you already know what that is. It's, it's, it, it, it's a cake using bananas and stuff at. Um, it sounds really nice. Um, banana flour, though, was one that I found interesting. So, when you have green bananas, and lots of them, so while they're still green and aren't ripe, apparently those can be ground up into a flour substitute and used like flour. Okay. Um, and so it was a very, very popular thing that was done in Africa and Jamaica as a cheaper alternative to wheat flour because they didn't have, have flour, but they had bananas everywhere. So I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's, a, that's a fair point. It's just like growing seasons as well wheat is kind of temperamental to grow so it makes sense that in an area where bananas are easy to grow wheat might struggle a little bit or you just don't have the space for it this we need to try What's banana it? pancakes is it just pancake batter just, with bananas in it you yes like like <laughs> I mean, not yeah. chunks it's just the you you just blend the banana into the batter as part of the fat i mean that does sound pretty nice oh, it tastes quite good it does sound pretty nice yeah Oh, this this was was the thing that I told mom that we we have to try at some point. It's kind of weird. It's called a flying Jacob. Okay. It's a main dish. It's a casserole with the bananas. Okay. It? Yes, it, it's composed of chicken, cream, chili sauce, bananas, roasted peanuts, and bacon. And it's a main Why dish do you casserole. Why have chicken and bacon? This is what it looks like. It's a little bit runny, so I'm not sure how much I would like it a lot, but at the same time, I kind of want to try that. It's like a chicken chili with bananas in it. <laughs> Basically. But why is there bacon? Why isn't there bacon? There's always bacon in everything. Bacon makes everything better. Very untrue. But I, I just, it just, I don't think it makes sense things you've got going there i do find What's, them i do find it amusing if, if, if we're talking about bananas that you 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 can actually like bananas are is, is potassium radioactive it's okay uh it's reactive I, it's, it's not radio, it's reactive i don't think it's, I don't radioactive. Think it's radioactive it's reactive 
But there is a way you can uh, separate the banana from the potassium and get just solid potassium metal from inside bananas. Interesting. I've seen some. Like, yes. Do it. Okay. The, the 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 idea of bananas being radioactive is because they they do contain high amounts of potassium, and there's an iso- and there's an, a potassium isotope that's, that's naturally occurring that is radioactive. Yes. And so a small 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 percentage of the potassium in bananas will be that that uh, that isotope which is which is radioactive, and so bananas are detectably barely radioactive. Yeah. Uh, because of the potassium. Yeah, potassium is also a, it's one of the is it alkali metals? One of the al- metals that react heavily to things, particularly water, to where if you drop an alkali metal into water, it explodes. Mm-hmm. So, technically speaking, you theoretically could make an explosive out of nothing but bananas. If you could what? cross. If How? You, you pro- if you can process the bananas down okay. as only being potassium, and then dump the potassium into water, it would react create a small explosion. Okay. I'm just saying it's something you can do. Okay. Explosive. No, thank you. But it's a cool idea, just knowing just... that you could make explosive bananas. Is it no thank you to the idea of making explosive bananas, or is it, an, or is it a no to the thing you just saw on your computer? This is, this is a traditional ch- ch- Chinese dessert called a banana roll or a banana cake. It's a common Chinese pastry found in Hong Kong and may occasionally be found in some overseas Chinatowns. Pastry is soft and made, and made with with glutinous rice. It's basically mochi on the outside. Ingredients may vary depending on, on the location. Each roll of cake is a banana oil flavored circular tube or flat object, slightly bigger than, a, than an adult sized index finger. Okay. That's making it. Does it have banana in it or not? <laughs> Does it just look like banana when people call it banana? Yeah, it's. The picture makes them look bigger. If it says index finger, it's like a tubular thing, be yay big. Yeah. That's mochi with banana oil in it. So it's banana flavored mochi, which might have cinnamon in it. I mean, that's just it's just mochi. Yeah, that's, that's just food stuff in general. But oh, no. I I I like the idea that you. I don't know if there are other metals that have or other um, fruits and stuff that have potassium in them. I'd have to look or like other of the alkaline metals you could extract, because there is a way of extracting. You need you need a bunch of other things to be able to extract it from the potassium uh, from. Bananas, but you can extract potassium okay. from the banana itself. Food banana containing peel. potassium. Yeah. What other things could you theoretically turn into explosives? Or a, a well, semi explosive so thing? Apparently, potassium is widely available in many foods, especially fruits and vegetables, leafy greens, beans, nuts, dairy foods, and starchy vegetables that will, like, like winter squash and rice sauces. So, dried fruits, beans, potatoes, winter squash, spinach, broccoli, beet greens, avocados, bananas, obviously. Cantaloupe, oranges, orange juice, coconut water, tomatoes, dairy and plant milks, yogurt, cashews, almonds, chicken, salmon, according to this random list from Harvard. Okay, I mean, you so theoretically, you could, could you could convert most food into potassium, and potassium goes boom in water. So that's that's just something fun you could just share when you're having dinner with someone. If you just know your food contains potassium, it's like theoretically you could turn this food into a small explosive. Oh, so anything with anything with salt on it, sodium chloride. If you could separate the sodium and the chlorine, um, you would have deadly poison and and uh, explode stone. Yes, that's true. So oh, is ex- so is deadly poison and explosive. Me- it's, te- it's technically metal, but. It yeah. counts as a metal. It's now. It's just metal. that. It's just that salt is sodium chloride, which is the bonding of a sodium ion and a chlorine ion. Yeah. They are ionized and they hold together. It's when you when you have pure sodium and, p- and pure chlorine, both are very very dangerous. Yeah. Together, they're necessary for yeah. pure survival. It's it, it's basically because um, well, not necessarily far, but I'm not sure 100 percent why on that. But the reason why they're so reactive is because it's the number of valence electrons they have around the outside. Every you want to complete a full set. Of eight, and because they're so close yep, and a set to it, is eight usually. Yeah, and because they're so close mm-hmm. to a full set, they're highly reactive to other things that want to give or gain electrons. 
Yeah, the, the reason for that is you've got something that has one valence electron. So one electron in the outer layer really doesn't want that one electron. And so when it meets something with seven that really does want it, um, it will take it and then they'll fuse together because of the uh, difference in polarity. When you take yeah. an electron from something, it becomes positive and the other thing becomes negative. So, that, so, so then they stick because one's positive and one's negative. It's like magnets. Yeah. It literally yeah. is magnets. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's how you can see about like, so, what chemicals do certain things. If you look at periodic table, things on the left of the periodic table have uh, one valence electron all the way up to eight being complete. And the things on the, eight, the, on the far right are the noble gases, which have eight valence electrons. And those are highly unreacted because they've yeah. got eight. They don't care. So Yeah, that is, small, that is how small the chemistry uh, effects. tables lay out. Okay, that is going to go yep. to any episode for today. Okay. So. Yep, yep. So... Thank you all for coming. I might go and grab a banana or something. I have a really fancy one. Uh, so but thank you all for coming. Uh, and we'll see you next week.